Nancy Bess and George couldn't believe what they heard. Neither could the others, as everyone spoke at once. No auditions, no trip to Hollywood, no starring on Twinkling Little Stars. I guess that's a wrap, Quincy sighed. Mayor Song Strong's arms waved in the air as he spoke to Sherry. Please, Miss Hemming, he said. Surely we can work something out. We're leaving River Heights on Sunday night, Sherry said, walking towards the door with Lucy and Cookie. I hope you can get to the bottom of this before then. When Sherry and the judges were gone, Nathan made an announcement. The kids could keep their things in the prop room in case the audition will help later in the weekend. Let's keep the cauldron here, Nancy said. Yeah, George said. All that oozing made it look like a pot of brown over pea soup. The girls dragged the icky witches' children back to the prop room. Most of the kids had already left, so the room was almost empty. Maybe Quincy is right, Bess said. Maybe what happened was because of the witches' curse. I heard that evil laugh, remember? Witches don't laugh, they cackle, George said. I have a feeling the spider sneezing and oozing brew were done on purpose. Nancy said, and not by a witch, a monster, or a ghost. The ghost tried to shove the cauldron under the table against the wall, but it would only go so far. There's something else under there, George said. She crawled underneath and dragged out the shopping bag. The bag was from Rex and Dex's costume and Shelby, a novelty shop on Main Street. Rex and Dex is where we got our witch costumes, and she said with a smile. They sell the coolest joke stuff too, George said, and she stuck her hand deep in the bag. I wonder what's in here. Don't snoop, George, Beth said. The bag doesn't belong to us, so none of our business. Oh yeah, George said. Check it out. George put out a can and held it up. It was a can of Stevie, Stevie's sneezing powder. Sneezing powder, Nancy dashed. Maybe that was sprinkled inside Kevin's mask to make him sneeze. What else is in there, Judge? Bess asked. Judge announced each item as she held it up. One almost empty bag of rubber spiders. A bottle of green bubble blast. No wonder our bubbles were out of control. Then she said someone replaced the bubble bath with that stuff. So that's why I didn't smell strawberries, Beth said. The last thing that George put out was the sales receipt. Not only did it show the price, but it also showed the date and the time of the purchase. This stuff was bought on Friday at 5 o'clock, George said. Reading the receipt, that's after we drop off our costumes and props here. Whoever did this was at Rex and Dex at that time, and she decided. She turned to Bess and smiled. See, monsters, witches, and ghosts shop at stores. Unless they are boutiques, George joked. But if it wasn't a monster or a ghost, who was it? Bess asked. I don't have a clue yet, but I do have this. Then she said she reached into her back pocket and pulled out a small book, my clue book. Tucked inside Nancy's clue book was a pen with a purple ink. Nancy used it to start a list of everything from the Rex and Dex bag. The sneezing powder, rubber spiders, and bottle of bubble blast. Are you still here? A voice asked. Nancy, Bess, and George looked up to see Nathan Alonzo. Nathan looked at the book in Nancy's hand. Are you just doing some doing homework? He asked. No, but it is an assignment. George said as they walked over to Nathan. Sort of. Maybe you can help us, Mr. Alonzo. 
and she said by telling us how late the theater was open on Friday. There's no show at this theater yet, Nathan said, so I locked the theater at 5 o'clock after everyone dropped off their trustees and props. What time did you open this morning? Nancy asked. I opened the theater at 7.30, Nathan replied. I wanted to get here early before the audition so I could do some work in my office. Was the prop room open early too? Bess asked. It was, Nathan answered. He raised an eyebrow and said, Since when do witches ask so many questions? Or oh, we're not just the blue crew, Nancy said with a smile. We are the clue crew. We'll be leaving now, Mr. Alonzo. George said, no more questions. As Nathan walked back to his office, Bess said, What do you mean, no more questions, George? We should have asked him about Nora's curse. Nathan said there was no curse, George said. That was before all those weird things happened, Bess said, remember? Nancy was still busy writing the timeline to talk about monsters or girls. Nathan locked the theater after everyone dropped off their stuff yesterday, Nancy said, and it, and he opened it early this morning. So the person who messed up our props, George, figured, must have been in the prop room early this morning too. If Nathan was here, Beth said, wouldn't he have seen somebody in the prop room? He might have been too busy in his office, Nancy said. We should go to Rex and Jax and find out who was there yesterday at 5 o'clock. Bear start, spotted something on the table and picked it up. It was a judge's badge. Nathan must have dropped his badge when he was here. Bear said, slipping it into her pocket. I'll give it to him on our way out. The girls left the prop room as they made their way down the hall. Nancy said, Let's start a suspect list. Who do you think ruined the auditions? Antonio was mad that he was caught cheating, George pointed out, and wasn't allowed to audition the way he wanted to. He also said he had some messy job to do, Nancy said. And what happened to at the audition was super messy. Nancy was about to write Antonio's name in the clue book when... Do you hear that? Bess said, looking up at the ceiling. Not that monster laugh again, Bess, George groaned. No, Bess whispered, it sounded like someone is playing the piano. This is a theater, Bess, Nancy said. Some shows have music. They are called musicals. Bess shook her head. Nathan said, there is no show going on here now. She said, I want to go upstairs and see what's up. Okay, George said. But if this has anything to do with the monsters or ghosts, we are wasting our time. The three friends climbed a red carpeted staircase to the second floor. Quietly, they followed the music to a door. It was open just a crack. Nancy, Bess, and George peeked inside. An old tiny piano playing a lively tune stood in the middle of the room. As Nancy looked closer, she gasped. The piano keys were moving up and down without a player. Do you see what I see? Nancy hissed. Totally, George said. That piano is playing by itself.